I'm here with Rob Savoy, who is a developer on Ganache Project. What's Ganache all about? Ganache is basically the GNU Flash Player client. Um, a bunch of years ago, we realized that Flash was kind of overtaking the uh, interactive web world, and the free software community was kind of left out. And so a bunch of years ago, I started the Ganache Project to develop a 100% free replacement for the Adobe Flash Player. Now, I've only really heard about Ganache in the last, I don't know, 18 months, two years. Um, it took a while to get, uh, to get noticed. Um, in the beginning, Ganache was created as a user interface layer for digital set-top boxes and stereo systems. And so most of the early usages was on embedded devices where nobody knew about Ganache. What happened one day was an old friend of mine, John Gilmore, who a lot of people know in the free software community, called me up and he said, hey, how'd you like to make that embedded Flash player run as a Firefox plug-in? So I did, and then instantly it became very popular. <laughs> And that's kind of when everybody started hearing about it, um, pretty much once we, we made that. And then when we got YouTube working two years ago, then it really kind of kicked in the Ganache's popularity and people started really noticing it. But it's actually a five-year-old project for me. So why are you here at UDS? Um, Ubuntu was one of the first distributions to ship Ganache and really get it out there to the world and stuff. Um, I also used to be a Debian developer for a long time too, and so um, you know I like the UDS crowd. It's good to still work with everybody. And the Ubuntu community is a lot easier to work with than some of the other distributions. So you know you come here to network and work together on solving problems. I won't ask you to name names. Um, so what are you hoping to get out of it? Um, actually, we're very big into embedded and mobile devices, since that's kind of where we came from. And as Ubuntu is really getting heavily into embedded and mobile user interfaces, um, I just demoed the Flash-based user interface for Ubuntu Mobile and stuff like that. And so it's kind of a good high volume information exchange. It's good for us to be able to talk to the engineers for Canonical trying to make you know Ubuntu Mobile work and I can answer a lot of our questions about how Flash players work and we can often then add special features to make their job in life a lot easier. So I guess it's a fairly small development team on Ganache. Is it just development power that's holding up um, progress with it? Yeah, I mean, I just demoed Flash 9 running on the user interface, but yeah, we have a small team of about four or five core developers. Um, that's basically been the extent of my fundraising abilities. And we have a wonderful, wonderful volunteer community who mostly are limited to testing because of licensing agreements with Adobe. If you've ever installed the Flash plugin, you can't work on Ganache, and so we are a 100% clean room reverse engineer project, and that has kind of limited it. Um, and we're really good with the core technology, but a Flash player is a huge project for a handful of people. If we had a few more people, People, we'd be done in a year. Where do you find four or five developers who have never installed the Flash plugin? Yeah, they actually have to find you. <laughs> Um, and, and that was basically what happened is it turned out that there were several other people who were really upset about Flash taking over the world. And when I got the plug-in working and people said, oh, wow, this looks like a project I want to put my time into. And most of my developers have been working on it for several years. Um, we would love to bring in more developers and stuff, but it's the restrictions with licensing problems is a real impediment to free software developers. So has Adobe opening their specifications for Flash made your life easier as Ganache developers? Well, not really, because we figured all that stuff out five years ago, or we wouldn't make any progress at all. I mean, I published my own version of the spec three years ago, and so it, while it's nice to see Adobe trying to be a bit more uh, open with some of their stuff, it was only the specifications. The licensing agreements on RTMP network protocols, the Adobe plugin, and the Adobe Flash player still restrict you from working on Flash players, and so although it's nice to see Adobe making a little step, it really didn't do us much good whatsoever. Do you think it makes any difference to anybody, really? Um, no, not really. It was a wonderful PR move that got massive press that was absolutely nothing. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, these videos are going up onto YouTube, and obviously Ganache supports YouTube, as you yeah. mentioned. Um, it's a bit of a moving target, though, isn't it? They change their player quite regularly. Yeah, they change their target quite regularly, but... Um, at the same time as we actually know the guy who writes the YouTube media player, and so we typically test the new versions. Like there's a new beta player they're working with now. We fixed all those bugs a couple of weeks ago um, and stuff like that. And we fix it in time to get the next Ganache release and the next update for Hardy and stuff. So that works out pretty good. We work pretty well with the YouTube guys. Cool. Um, one of the things we're doing is limiting these videos to kind of 10 minutes because there's this YouTube limit of 10 minutes. Uh, now, I understand Ganache has got a bit of a, uh, a head start on maybe fixing some of those problems. 
Yeah, basically it's the upload file problem. Um, the existing combination of Adobe Media Servers and um, Adobe Flash Player clients don't allow you to restart um, network connections that drop. And we all know that the internet is kind of full of congestion and problems. And so I've recently cloned the Adobe Media Server and that it gives us an ability, since we control both ends of the connection, to restart uploads where they dropped off, much like WGET. Because um, if you wanted to upload like a DVD, you just can't. And uh, we've, we fixed that problem. So how do you go about doing something like that, you know, cloning the Adobe Media Server? Um, you spend a bunch of time reading publicly available documentation. Then you ultimately try to find people that have that kind of software. I got permission from some people to um, packet sniff their connections. And I walked home with a whole pile of hex dumps. And then I spent the next four months reading hex dumps until I can pretty much decode it in memory. <laughs> It sounds like a tough but important job in the end. It's really, really hard, but personally I like reverse engineering, so it's actually really fun, and it's more fun to do it purely legally, clean room style, as well as cheating, because cheating takes all the fun out of reverse engineering. So what are the next steps for Ganesh? The next step is after the sort of media player is finally totally released is we're working on flash creation tools. We support the Ming project, which is a flash compiler, and we're working on creating a GUI for creating children's games all in flash. We do a lot of work on the LLPC project and the Intel Classmate, and so we really want to make a children's game creation environment that hopefully over time will evolve into an adult level creation tool. You spend a lot of time working with flash uh, as a format. Is it a good format? A lot of people think the flash itself is inherently bad, never mind the plugin. Um, format's a format. Um, most people keep saying, oh, why don't you go do something better? But at, at this point, Flash is on so many machines, it seemed to make the most sense to support the existing technology and the existing formats. But the way Ganache is designed, it's insanely modular with a lot of internal APIs. And we already have plans for the sort of next generation. It would not be that hard for us, ultimately, in the long term, to replace the Flash format with something a lot better using all the same renderers and multimedia infrastructure. And it's definitely in our, our long-range plans, but right now we spend most of our time working on uh, Flash 9 compatibility. And if there are people out there who've never installed the plugin and are willing to help uh, get involved with the development effort, how can they get involved? Um, the easiest thing is to go to one of our websites and drop into our email lists. Um, we're hosted on savannah.gnu.org. We have a ganashdev.org, which is our developer site. Um, ganash-dev at gnu.org is our mailing list. And we like to we really like our volunteers and a lot of the new people that get involved. So I think unlike some free software projects, we're really good at letting people come in and work with us on our stuff, as long as they've never signed the Adobe licensing agreements. Rob, thank you very much. Thanks.